What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the FF Ballbusters podcast. Thank you for joining us. My name is Eric. That's my co-host, Will. And today, we are getting into all of the latest free agent signings since the legal tampering period has opened. Um, We're going to try our best to get through every single one, or at least all of the fantasy-relevant ones, for you guys today. I'm excited to get into it. But before we do, real quickly, Will, do you have anything to say to the people? Absolutely. Thank you guys for all the support you've been giving on the channel, and we'd like to keep that going. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you know when we drop all of our latest videos. And hit that like button, too. It's absolutely free and the best way to get our stuff out there to the people. But I'm excited about this one this is definitely going to be a fun one right here absolutely um so just kind of as a as a primer for you guys we're going to give our thoughts on each player that we talk about their team fit uh their dynasty trade value approximately um and also the effect that their signing kind of has on the rest of the team the rest of the players involved in those offenses for almost every free agent uh on this list and then for trade values specifically obviously that's going to vary depending on your league settings um but we're basing this off of a pretty standard super flex half ppr setup um so i think that's all of the intro that you guys need to fully understand what we're going to talk about today uh we're going to start at the quarterback position and we're going to start with kirk cousins the biggest signing on the quarterback market he signs with the atlanta falcons for four years 180 million dollars will let me know some of your thoughts here So I got extremely excited when I saw this one. I figured it's just the fantasy upgrade for every single asset that's over there in Atlanta in terms of just the skill positions they got over there. Uh, It's just a godsend for anybody who's got Drake London, Kyle Pitts, or B. John Robinson. Uh, Kyle Pitts' season may finally be upon us again (laughs) since his rookie year, so I'm really excited about that. Drake London is automatically a top 12 dynasty asset in terms of receivers, and Bijan was already the dynasty RB1, but even in redraft, that may even go up more uh, because you know how running backs kind of, you know, uh, benefit from Kirk being on the team. And for Kirk's fantasy value, probably would have been better if he had stayed with Minnesota, but with great weapons, a really great coach, and, you know, I'm sure they're already, you know, he had great weapons, a really good coach, and already had the chemistry with the players on that team. But I think he's going right. to be able to build something great with this new team that he's with now. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I do think that would have been preferable for his fantasy value specifically to stay in Minnesota, but he's still going to have great weapons, like you mentioned. Uh, I like the coaching staff and what they're building in Atlanta. So it's not much of a downgrade, if at all. Um, in terms of his actual dynasty trade value, I- I'm thinking he's probably like a late first to early second. Um, obviously, quarterback in Superflex is going to be really valuable, but he's 35 years old coming off of an Achilles injury. Do you feel like that's a good range for him? I feel like it's a great range for him, honestly. I, I think in terms of value, he's going to deliver, you know, especially because that Achilles tear, it is scary, but is, according to his style of play, it's not going to be the most, the biggest hindrance for him, I believe. Right. No, I would agree with that. All right, let's keep it moving. Uh, Baker Mayfield resigns with the Buccaneers, but that's something that we already talked about. If you're interested in our thoughts on that, check out our last video. Um, any of the any of these moves that happened prior to the legal tampering period, we have already discussed. So you can go check out that last video if you want more info. Uh, Russell Wilson, the next guy on this list that has been signed to a team, he goes to the Pittsburgh Steelers on a one year, one point two million dollar kind of prove it deal. Um, yeah, let me let me know what you're thinking about the fit, about his fantasy value, all that good stuff. Uh, I mean, he's an upgrade over what they already had going on over there. So, like, I I mean, I guess he's an upgrade over what they already had over there, to be <laughs> honest with you. Um, uh, Russ had a pretty underrated year last year, especially compared to the year prior. So, it's not like he's completely dead in the water. And I think he is better than Mason Rudolph or what Kenny Pickett have to offer to the team. So... It's an upgrade, but it's going to stand to be seen how this team is going to use Russell Wilson if they're able to utilize him. He will have, in my opinion, a better coaching staff and Mike Tomlin and just the guys over there. But actually, who's the OC over there is uh, who at this point? Arthur Smith. Yeah. (laughs) So I don't know. I'm not too excited about Russell Wilson himself as a passer or really any of the passing assets over there because we've seen what Arthur Smith can do to an offense. But, uh, I mean, this is one that happened, and we're going to just have to wait and see how they treat this guy because this guy we thought was, you know, I guess he is still kind of a Hall of Fame candidate, but he's a guy who we thought of a lot higher than he is now. And, yeah, uh, yeah, the fall off has been huge. Completely agreed. Um, I, I do think you're right. I think he's at least a slight upgrade over what they were currently working with, but it does kind of feel like they're just 
upgrading into the higher tier of QB purgatory. Like it's not mm-hmm. <laughs> there, you know, this isn't a crazy bump for them. Um, I do think that it could be a decent like quarterback wide receiver fit for George Pickens. Um, Russ is more willing to kind of throw to uh, like jump ball winning X receivers than I think most quarterbacks are. And that's exactly what Pickens needs to succeed. Um, and also it's something that we'll talk about once we get to the wide receivers, but Deontay Johnson has moved on from the team. And so mm-hmm. that's going to open up uh, some more volume for Pickens. We saw last year when Deontay Johnson wasn't playing that Pickens was able to take on more of that volume and be a pretty uh, substantial fantasy asset. So I think his dynasty value does get a bit of a bump. I think that puts um, Pickens in kind of that late first, mid to late first range. Um, uh, maybe maybe not mid. I probably wouldn't go any more than like the 108 or 109. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think late first in that range is more so. I think mid is a little bit too expensive, especially in this offense. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. And, and then for Russ specifically, I have him at like a mid to late second. Um, I, again, super flex, it matters. Like you need any productive quarterbacks on your rosters, but I don't expect him to be difference making in terms of production. Um, and he's also what 34, 35 in the, in the same kind of age range as Kirk cousins. So mm-hmm. he's not got a lot of shelf life left either. Yeah, absolutely agree. Same draft class too. So that, yeah, oh, that's should right. be same age. That's right. Very true. All right, let's move on to Gardner Minshew here. Uh, he signs with the Las Vegas Raiders on a two-year, $25 million deal. Um, I, I think even with this signing, I wouldn't entirely rule out the potential for the Raiders to still sign or draft another quarterback. Um, but what are your thoughts on Minshew specifically and what he might do for the Raiders here? So specifically, I think, like you said, I think they're going to end up bringing in another quarterback, like signing or you know drafting another one. But if they do draft a quarterback, I think this is a good opportunity for them to have someone there as that kind of bridge. And I think Gardner yeah. Minshew is a good guy to kind of support that. Um, I think in terms of uh, fantasy himself, I, this isn't the most exciting signing in the world. But at the same time, I wouldn't rule it out being somewhat exciting because they do still have some assets over there. Like they do still have Devontae Adams at the moment. We don't know what's going to happen now. with him. But we have seen Gardner Minshew kind of favor, you know, uh, alpha wide receivers, you know, as most mm-hmm. quarterbacks do. But at the same time, you know, we've seen him actually support pretty good fantasy numbers from uh, wide receivers, such as, you know, the likes of A.J. Brown, the weeks that he started for the Eagles, or uh, even uh, Devonta Pittman. Smith. Yeah, Michael Pittman as well last year. So yeah. it's not the worst signing in the world, and he's going to automatically – at this point right now, be the starter for that team. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is about to get released, and he wasn't really a guy anyways. And I think Gardner Minshew is definitely better than Aiden O'Connell. So he should provide yeah. at least the kind of bump up for the players around him. But in terms of team, I don't think he's there to stay. He's just the guy that's kind of going to bridge them till they get to the next step of what they want to do. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. And, and even, even if he is the full-time starter this year, like – I'm just not that excited about it. I, I think Minshew was a good quarterback in Jacksonville. I don't know that he's that same quarterback anymore necessarily. And I also think that Shane Steichen is a fantastic coach and was able to get mm-hmm. more out of him than I think anybody else or most other other coaches will be able to. Um, so for me, this is, this is kind of opening up a cell window for Garner Minshew. Um, it seems like he's going – kind of for like an early third right now. Um, that's something that I'd be willing to take. And I bet there's some people that are kind of desperate for QBs and super flex leagues that would give you like a late second or maybe like a 25 second or something like that. And if you can get a deal like that, I would jump on it. Absolutely agree with that one right there. All right. Uh, Jacoby Brissett signs with the Patriots one year, 8 million. He's definitely in that bridge quarterback range. I don't mm-hmm. know that we really need to talk much about him. You agree? Yeah, I agree. Jameis, I think this is at least somewhat interesting. Jameis signs with Cleveland Browns to a one-year deal. Uh, not sure exactly what the specifics are yet in terms of his financial return. Um, I could see him starting some games for the Browns. I was about to say, if they stay on the same trajectory and Deshaun Watson stays on the kind of career trajectory he's been on, Jameis Winston could see the field a lot more than people are uh, imagining they would. So, I mean, if you're able to acquire James, I don't think it'd be the worst thing in the world to have him on your bench, to be honest with you. And he's the weeks he comes out there, he's going to throw the ball a lot. It's just yeah. a matter of how well he's <laughs> yeah. going to throw the ball. But he's kind of been on the up since he left uh, Tampa Bay, to be honest, in terms of at least like efficiency, stuff like that. 
Yeah, I, so in my notes, I have written down here, like, you should absolutely check your Dynasty waiver wires to see if he's available and he's absolutely worth a stash in that regard, uh, but that I'm not necessarily looking to trade for him. I, you said that maybe you'd be looking to acquire. I'd be fine if we're talking, like, mid to late fourth. Yeah. But there's just totally the possibility that it's worth nothing. I mean, it, I guess you're not risking much when you're talking about that late of a, a draft pick, so... Yeah, because at that point, at that point, it's like you could acquire somebody who, like you said, you could start a few games. I'm not geeked up to go and get him. I don't think you guys should go out and just run to go grab Jameis Winston. But at the same time, you know, I think that I think a mid to late fourth would be, you know, a decent shout, to be honest. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, And then three other names that signed with teams here. Tyrod Taylor to the Jets for two years. Sam Darnold to the Vikings for one year. Don't get upset that we're skipping that one. I highly, highly, highly doubt that he's actually going to be the starter for this team or even really take a snap this year. We'll see, but I anticipate they're going to trade up in the draft uh, for their actual starting quarterback. And then Drew Locke to the Giants on a one-year, $5 million deal. Yeah, those happened. (laughs) So let's move on to the running back position. And a pretty exciting one right here off the bat, Saquon Barkley goes to the division rival Philadelphia Eagles on a three-year, $38 million deal approximately. Let me know what you think. I don't know about you guys, but I'm absolutely sick of seeing the Eagles pick up great players in the (laughs) offseason every year. But um, this one, like you said, it was a great move for Saquon himself. Uh, Obviously, he struggled with the Giants, had one of the lowest uh, yards before contact rate in the NFL last year. The offensive line was terrible over there. So in terms of career, in terms of longevity, this is just a great move for Saquon. He's going to definitely last a little bit longer in the league just because of this move alone. Uh, The Eagles line's top five and created the most yards before contact in the NFL, so he should benefit greatly from that. Uh, the one thing I am worried about with Saquon at this team in terms of him being a fantasy asset. So Saquon Barkley, great running back. I think he's a guy with top five. He's going to have top five potential just about every single week. But in terms of where I kind of value Saquon, if this were redraft, if this were, you know, even dynasty, he's sort of towards the back end of RB1s, to be honest with you, just because of how this team is structured, because of how they run their offense. You got assets like A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith on the outside. You got Dallas Goddard across the middle. You got Jalen Hurts himself, who, if in trouble, can make things happen with his legs on the ground himself. Uh, It's a team that doesn't throw the ball to running backs at a very high rate at all. So Saquon's receiving, you know, it's something that we kind of valued a lot in him as a player, but that's something that's not really going to be there anymore. So he's really going to have to get a lot of stuff done on the ground. Now, with that being said, I think he absolutely can get it done on the ground. We saw DeAndre Swift be a great uh, fantasy asset last year in terms of just getting it done on the ground, running the ball. He had a 1,000-yard season, and I believe Saquon Barkley is better than DeAndre Swift. So it's a bump up, but it's – it's a bump up in terms of team situation and just situation for Saquon, but in terms of fantasy, I'm not sure how much things really, really moved for Saquon. If anything, they may have even moved down a little bit. I don't know that I'd go that far. I think I think the offensive line alone is going to make such a huge difference for him because you mentioned the yards before contact being below 30 sec- I think he was like 36th last year because of that offensive line mm-hmm. and now he gets to go to the Eagles where they're top five uh, in terms of uh, yards like their creation of, of yards before contact in the NFL to, with their backfield so I think that's going to be huge for him I agree Jalen Hurts is going to steal a lot of the red zone work they're not going to pass to him maybe as much as they did in New York um, but I just think that the upside case is mm-hmm. now available to him whereas it kind of wasn't in New York um but I like the way that you outlined uh, most of the situation in terms of how it affects the rest of the team. I don't want to bump anybody down significantly, but I do think it's a little uh, ambitious to have all of A.J. Brown, Devonta Smith, Dallas Goddard, Saquon Barkley ranked as highly as they are right now. Mm-hmm. Like somebody's going to have to bite the bullet. Somebody's not going to be getting as big of a share as they used to. I'm not sure exactly who that's going to be necessarily, but like there's just not enough footballs to go around to support all of them being high end fantasy assets. So I think that's something to consider. Uh, But the last thing for Saquon Barkley, his actual dynasty trade value at this point, 
I think he's probably in that kind of late first territory. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would say late first as well. Um, he's a guy, like I said, this is going to be positive for him, and this should help his career last even longer too. So I wouldn't mind yeah. paying that late first you know, price for him, to be honest. I like it. Um, let's go to Josh Jacobs, who's in a pretty similar situation here. He goes to the Green Bay Packers on a four-year, $48 million deal. Pretty big running back deal here. I will say, not entirely sure why Green Bay decided to go this route paying substantially more money to a running back who, in my opinion, is kind of a lateral move, if not a slight downgrade from Aaron Jones. Um, I, I read into it a little bit more, and it does seem like if they didn't restructure with Aaron Jones and he didn't take a pay cut, their uh, financial value would have been similar. Um, but even if they had offered, like, you know, a much smaller pay cut than what they were they were trying to propose to Aaron Jones, they could have kept him for less money. Anyway, we're getting too deep into the weeds on that part. For Josh Jacobs and this Green Bay team, how are you feeling about it? So I think in terms of, uh, like you said, team situation, it's weird because it seems like a lateral step, but they did get younger, so I guess that's kind of the benefit there. But for yeah. Jacobs himself, I think this is just a great situation for him. He's got a better quarterback, uh, way better coaching staff, a better O-line. So he should benefit greatly from this. Maybe he'll score a receiving touchdown now. Who knows? But <laughs> <laughs> but Josh Jacobs, I think, is definitely in a better spot in terms of just being here with the Green Bay Packers, and he should see a lot of success very, very early on. No, I completely agree. Um, and then in terms of trade value, again, I think he's basically in the same boat as Saquon. I have him right around that late first type value. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the late first is definitely a good price to be paying for him here because he's four years, $48 million. They're going to put him to work for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of my favorite signings in terms of team fit here, we got the king, Derrick Henry, going to the Baltimore Ravens on a two-year, $16 million deal. Yes, he's old, but I think he can still bring it, especially behind this Baltimore Ravens offensive line and in the same backfield as Lamar Jackson. Uh, we just talked about it with Saquon, where the yards before contact was terrible because of the offensive line. Same with Derrick Henry when he was with the Titans. Their offensive line was putrid, and he was constantly getting hit in the backfield. Um, but now he gets the improved offensive line and like the, the not the play action, the RPO game mm -hmm. with Lamar. Like how are defenses going to defend that? Yeah, you you don't really. It's it's going to be scary, like you said, because <laughs> you got one guy who's just going to run through you and the other guy who's going to run around you. So between those two, between Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry, first off, this is a match they've been trying to make happen for a long time. They've been trying to trade for him. So now they finally just yeah. were able to sign him. And I think this is just going to be a match made in heaven because you can't stack boxes against this team because if you do, Lamar's going to make you pay for it. And if you don't, Derrick Henry's going to make you pay for it. Now, it's an older Derrick Henry as well, so, you know, stuff happens. He declines a little bit. But I think all in all, this is a great move. In terms of value, what are you thinking for Derrick Henry here? Just because he is older and, you know, he isn't exactly the same player we used to see back in the day, but at the same time, he's someone who can still get it done. Yeah, I think he's still got it. I think, you know... Like you said, you like the definitely... offensive line play was absolutely putrid in Tennessee. Right. I, I think you there's it, it's a little bit of both, right? You can attribute some of it to a little bit of athletic decline, physical decline from him being 29, 30 years old at this point. But I think a lot of it also goes to that offensive line. Um Trade value is, is a little tough. Obviously, with any of these, it's going to depend on your team situation, whether you're a contender or a rebuilder. If you're a rebuilder, you probably want to stay away from Henry unless you can get a great deal and then flip him again. Um, I'm thinking he kind of settles kind of into that early second range. In redraft, I think he's going to be really valuable. So on like a true contender, if you have extra picks to play with, I wouldn't mind a late first. But I think that might be pushing it just kind of with his age and the length of the contract here. Yeah, I think that early second range is probably a little bit better. Uh, if you could yeah. possibly get it done mid-second, but I don't know anyone who's going to really give up Derrick Henry at this point for a mid-second either, uh, especially with the excitement yeah. of this signing. So I think right. early second is fair. I like that. Uh, Tony Pollard, one of the more surprising signings of this kind of period so far. He goes to the Tennessee Titans on a three-year, $24 million deal. You want to kind of discuss what we thought, what we talked about prior to getting on here? Yeah, this one was confusing for me um, because I just thought it was just like they, they signed an older Tajay Spears, to be honest. Yeah. 
So I don't know why exactly they did this to have two of the same guy. Um, like something we had talked about before, I thought that, you know, Tony Pollard's last season was disappointing. You agreed with that sentiment as well. But the context that came along with that is he was coming off a broken leg. I had to remember myself that, like, I felt like he was on the field way earlier than I kind of expected him to be. And that kind of yeah. showed on paper as well. So I think there is some validity, validity to the fact that, you know, Tony Pollard is better than what we saw last season. But having him on this team with a player who is younger and, in my opinion, more explosive than him, and they both have you know a very similar skill set, it's a little confusing for me. But w- what do you think about this one right here? Because this is definitely just going to drive the price of both of them down, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, I think that that could be valuable. I think that they both have a role to play. I'm very curious to see how this shakes out in this backfield specifically. Uh, but you make a great point. Pollard and Spears – very redundant skill sets, similar body types. So I don't know how they're kind of going to differentiate themselves or what role they're going to be in. Um, I think, I don't know. Like if you have a league mate who thinks that Tony Pollard is going to be the lead back, then obviously now is a sell window. I I would try to move on from him. Um, But if not, uh, I don't mind kind of holding just to see what happens Mm -hmm. back there. But I do think that this opens up a buy window for Tajay. Uh, Because we had been talking about him as a potential Mm -hmm. buy. He was for us at the end, near the end and like midway through last season. And then his price rose all the way up into the RB1 territory. And now it's going to be dropping back down probably into like the RB18, 19, 20 range. So if if you can get him there, I'd be very happy to pick him up. Um, But in terms of Pollard specifically, because that's who we're we're focusing on here, I have him like around a mid-second, but I'm not like... I think that's what his value is to the market. I don't know that I'm willing to really give that up to get him on my team necessarily. Yeah, like that's where his value is. I'm not excited about it. If it were a late second, I'd be, you know, a little bit more inclined to do it. But a mid second seems a little bit too expensive for a guy who's going to definitely be splitting touches and who literally does the same thing as another guy on his team who's younger than him. But also that other guy doesn't have an ACL. So, like, I really don't know how this situation is going to really shake out. But yeah. Like you said, I, I am more excited, like you said, to acquire a Tajay if I had the opportunity to choose between the two. Absolutely. All right, we, we got to hustle a little bit. We're, we're taking a while. I knew it was going to, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Austin Eckler here signs with the Washington Commanders. Two years, $11.5 million. Um, another guy that we last season we felt like was slowing down, had a little bit of a disappointing year. Uh, he was another guy that was also dealing with injuries. Um, kind of say that probably attribute it to both the injuries and his actual decline as an athlete. Um, but what do you think about team fit here and what he can provide to fantasy teams? Nah, team fit, it's perfect. Uh, he's with his running backs coach again from the Chargers, Anthony Lynn. So guy he had some yeah. of his best years behind. But also just in terms of team fit with Brian Robinson, Brian Robinson can finally be the two-down guy. And Austin Eckler, definitely a pass-catching specialist out of the two. So I just think in terms of that, it's going to be great. I think we can get back to more of those days where we saw Austin Eckler be the more efficient back on the team with another guy who's just running between the tackles like he was with Melvin Gordon back in the day. Not saying Brian Robinson's yeah. Melvin Gordon. But – you know what I'm saying? I think that's a good team fit. And with less volume, hopefully Eckler's going to be able to stay a little bit healthier this year. He is getting older. exactly. So, yep. yeah, I think we're not going to see the old Austin Eckler, but we're going to see a newer version that can hopefully be more efficient and more on the pass catching side of things than between the tackles. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, and then in terms of trade value, I have him right around a late second right now. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd say that's fair. Late second should be fair for Austin Eckler at this point in his career. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there's some discussion to be had, but I think that that's approximately where he'll be. Obviously, if your competitor, maybe a little bit higher than that. But let's let's keep it moving. Uh, DeAndre Swift goes to the Chicago Bears three years, 24 million. I'm confused. I don't know why the Bears felt it necessary. Like it, we've talked about this. We've talked about the fact that we still think DeAndre Swift is talented and can be a producer at the NFL level. But you have Khalil Herbert, one of the most efficient running backs in the NFL, and Roshan Johnson, who you just drafted, and now you pay like a significant amount of money to DeAndre? What are we doing? Yeah, they took the bait. Um, <laughs> like I said, he's coming off one of his best years. It's also the healthiest year we've ever seen out of DeAndre Swift. So honestly, to see him repeat that again, I'm not sure how likely that is. Um, yeah. 
But I don't know. This is a this is one of those signings that happened. It wasn't really exciting for me. It was just more so disappointing for everyone else on the team, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, they're paying him a substantial amount, so he should be getting a good amount of usage for the amount that they're paying him. So I don't know. This doesn't bump up DeAndre Swift for me. It kind of just bumps everybody down. Yeah, like part of me wants to say go buy Khalil Herbert for pennies. And if it really is pennies, I think that that's a fine idea. But I don't know. I, I don't know that that's going to return anything for you. I think he's incredibly talented and deserves to be the lead back here, but that doesn't. If the NFL doesn't give him the opportunity, then that doesn't matter. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but then for Swift trade value, um, just because of age, I do think that like an early to mid second is probably where the market is going to have him. But a similar situation to what we talked about with Pollard, where I think if I'm in a position where I need a running back, he's not who I'm targeting necessarily. So I don't know that I'd give up an early second. A mid second's a little bit more reasonable. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think mid-second is definitely more reasonable than early, but depending on who it is that you're trading from, we might have to give up an early for him, which sucks, but I don't. I really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, a guy that I am intrigued by with the landing spot here, Aaron Jones goes to division rival Minnesota Vikings on a one-year $7 million deal. Um we talked about it a little bit uh, with Josh Jacobs. I kind of would have preferred that Aaron Jones stayed put in Green Bay. Uh, they already you know, have that young ascending offense who most importantly has the quarterback position figured out. Um, Vikings, similar in terms of being young, ascending, good pieces on the offense, but Kirk Cousins is no longer there, so they got to figure out who's going to be under center for them. Um, what are your thoughts about what Aaron Jones can provide to this Minnesota Vikings team? He's going to provide some stability. He's going to be better than Alexander Madison. That's definitely for sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they're going to probably, like you said, bring in a quarterback, probably end up trading up in the draft to, to do so. Um, so with a rookie quarterback on the team, Aaron Jones should be a pretty valuable asset on this team because they should be leaning on him quite a bit. So it's not yeah. the worst spot for Aaron Jones, but it, like you said, it's definitely a downgrade from where he was at. Uh, just in terms of team situation. Who knows? Whatever rookie they get could light up the league, and he could just be amazing this year. But I don't see the fit as uh, productive for Aaron Jones, at least like to the same level the Packers would have been, if that makes any sense. Yeah. No, I can see that. Um, and then for his trade value, I have the market value around a late second, I think. Um, would you go any higher than that? Like if, if you're a contending team in need of running backs, or is that kind of the max? I would go late second just because of the contract that he got, because it's only a one year. And after this, I have mm -hmm. no idea what's going to happen with Aaron Jones, and he is getting older. So I think this is like one of yeah. those. A late second is kind of cool what I'd do for a prove it, guy on a prove-it deal, to be honest. Yeah. And, and the other thing to kind of take into account with all of these running back signings and what their dynasty trade value is going to be is the 2024 – uh, running back class and I think that the NFL is kind of showing their hand with the money that they're giving to these free agent running backs and saying they probably don't like this class very much and so we got to take that into account as dynasty mm -hmm. managers as well um, that you know we might not get the draft capital we're hoping for for these guys or the team fit that we're hoping for so if you're in need of running back I could see going with some of these guys ahead of them yeah decent indicator right there I like that and then let's go to Joe Mixon. Uh, he was originally slated to be released by the Bengals, and then at the last second, he ended up being traded to the Houston Texans. Uh, goes from good team with great quarterback to another good team with a great quarterback. You love that type of, or you love that aspect. Um, the difference, though, is that Houston was primarily a zone scheme rushing attack, uh, and Mixon over the past two years has been much more efficient in kind of man gap scheme than he has been in zone. Um, and that's actually a big reason why we saw Damian Pierce kind of get phased out of the Texans offense last year is because he didn't fit that Bobby Slowick rushing style. So I'm a little bit concerned about the the schematic fit of Joe Mixon, but also, uh, you know, Houston has proved this past year now that they're a better run organization that they have been in years past. So I feel like they wouldn't do that deal without kind of accounting for that difference. No, it's like you said, I mean, they trade it for him for a reason. Uh, because they could have just acquired him after he was released, but they wanted to make sure they had him on the team. So I don't know. I don't know. Joe Mixon has been a guy for us that like volume has kind of been the thing for him. He's just had yeah. so much volume that he's been effective. But with this team, 
I'm not exactly sure what direction they're going in with this. Um, he's a guy who's proven also that he can catch the ball as of the last couple of years as well. So he is, yeah. you know, a guy who can provide in that aspect. So I'm going to be really interested to see, like you said, how they use Joe Mix and how they utilize him. But the fact that they trade it for him, it's pretty big. You know, it shows that they do believe in him and they were willing to give up, you know, future assets for him. So, yeah, yeah it's going to be interesting. No, it's, it's definitely encouraging. Um, I have him sitting around a mid second. Um, and again, this is one that I think could fluctuate depending on team situation. He finished the season last year with the Bengals really well. I think better than a lot of people realize. Um, but again, we just have to wait on team fit. But what do you think about a mid second for Mixon? I would say mid to late. I think you may be able to even get a late, get him for a late second, to be honest with you, depending on the owner of the team, uh, depending on the owner of, uh, Mixon, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, if you can get a late, if you can get him for a late second, that's something that I would jump on just to see what happens. Cause uh, again, I like the Texans trend in their offense. And, and if they're bringing in Mixon to fill in that same role that Devin Singletary had, then fantastic. Agreed. Um, we can, we can kind of power through some of these guys here at the end. Uh, Devin Singletary signs with the New York giants, three years, 16 and a half million thoughts. <sighs> Going to get good volume, but he definitely got sent to running back hell with the Giants. We just saw Saquon yeah. not really you know, do too great out there, and I'd imagine Saquon's a little bit better than Devin Singletary, so it's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out. Yeah. Uh, early third for him? Too rich, too cheap? Me, personally, I probably wouldn't do it, but I have a lot of Devin Singletary bias. Uh, but I think an early fair. third is a fair price. It is a fair price. Yeah, I, I think the volume will be there, but that offensive line, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Um, Gus Edwards, a little bit more interesting, goes to the L.A. Chargers on a two-year, $6.5 million deal. Um, I do expect them to bring in another back, probably in the draft. Uh, so if you are looking to trade for him, probably pump the brakes a little bit because his value will probably go down a little bit after the draft. Uh, but thoughts on team fit and what he can do? Yeah, he's going to be a great RB2 for Blake Corum when they eventually bring him in. So <laughs> Facts. I think it's, you know, it's a, one of those fits that it made sense because this team is going to definitely go more run heavy than they have in the past, especially with, you know, uh, Jim at the helm. So mm -hmm. I think it's a good it's a good fit for Jim, Gus Edwards. Yeah, and I mean, if he ends up being the goal line back for this team, he can fall in the end zone enough times to be fantasy relevant. Yeah. Uh, early third. Early third is fair. Early third is fair for Gus Edwards, especially in this offense, like you said. He should be a goal line guy, get a good amount of volume. He's going to trip and fall for some yards. He'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like it. Um, Zach Moss goes to the Cincinnati Bengals after Joe Mixon uh, leaves the scene. Two years, $8 million deal. He was great at the beginning of last year prior to Jonathan Taylor's return in Indianapolis. Quietly really efficient as well. Uh, do you think he can repeat any of that success here with the Bengals? I absolutely do. I think he'll be able to carry some of that momentum into this season. Uh, I think the price tag isn't too bad either. It's just a good landing spot all around. He'll be in a good offense. And between him and Chase Brown, I think that's just a good kind of one-two punch right there. So I like Zach Moss in this offense. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a bad fit. I think you bring up a good point with Chase Brown. I think they're going to be splitting the carries. Chase Brown is going to be the more explosive of the two backs. Um, but Moss could be that goal line guy. And if that's the case, you could have a Joe, Mix Joe Mixon-esque year, potentially, uh, you know, yeah. with like half the volume. Um, but yeah, so uh, all these guys that we just talked about in that same range, do you think early third is reasonable? I think early third, early to mid. If you can get him for a mid, I would be super yeah. excited. But early third is probably what you're going to end up having to pay for him. Yeah, I like that. Uh, and then lastly, Antonio Gibson signs with the Patriots. Three years, $11.25 I truly, truly wish the best for Gibby. I think he's a talented football player, but, I mean, I've, I've given up. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And it's just interesting because I feel like the one thing Antonio Gibson really brings to a team is being able to catch the ball out the backfield. I feel like that's his, you know, biggest asset. But at yeah. the same time, he's on a team where he's behind uh, Ramondre Stevenson, who's also really good at that. So if he couldn't really carve out a role behind Brian Robinson, who's not a great pass catcher, who ended up, you know, kind of carving that role out for himself on that team, exactly. I don't think he's going to be able to do that with Ramondre in front of him. So... It's tough, but three years, 11.25 isn't anything to shake a stick at, so they probably have some sort of a plan for him. Maybe maybe they move him to the outside like we talked about all these years, and they start using <laughs> them there, but 
I, I'm not super excited for Antonio Gibson going forward in terms of fantasy. But like you said, I wish him the yeah. best. Absolutely. I didn't even write down uh, like a trade value because I'm not looking to trade for him. But maybe a fourth of sorts. <laughs> I yeah, don't know. Early to mid fourth, maybe. Yeah. Maybe, I'm but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not excited about that one. Yeah. Uh, DJ Dallas, we don't need to really talk about it, but he goes to the Arizona Cardinals on a three year deal. Uh, probably, yeah, not very fantasy relevant. Let's move on to the wide receiver position. Um, T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, Mike Evans, uh, we've already talked about. Uh, T. Higgins, not a free agent, but requested to be traded. Um, Michael Pittman returns to the Colts. Mike Evans returns to the Buccaneers. I think they all have um, bright futures ahead of them. But if you're interested for more info on that, check our last video. Uh, Marquise Brown, Calvin Ridley, unsigned to this point. First guy that does get signed is actually, I'll go down one, Gabe Davis. He goes to the Jacksonville Jaguars, three years, $39 million. I think it is a good signing for Jacksonville. Because uh, they've been looking for that true boundary receiver for the past two years, and they finally have it. But I'm very skeptical in terms of fantasy returns, what Gabe Davis is going to be able to bring. I was skeptical about what Gabe Davis was going to bring when he was on the Bills. So <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty tough uh, to really get excited about this one. I saw it, and I was like, okay, that happened. Uh, like you said, it's a good fit for the team because they need somebody who can play on the outside. And Gabe Davis has proven that he can do that you know, time in and time out. But in terms of just uh, usage, being able to get open himself, the same stuff we've always been saying on this channel if you've been a longtime viewer. But if you're new, we're not really super confident in Gabe Davis. Uh, his ability to get open is one of the worst in the league, you know, just in terms of separation himself. Um, but I think this does open up a good window for other assets on this team, like Christian Kirk, uh, Evan Ingram, guys like that, especially if Ridley doesn't resign. But I don't. It's tough if Ridley's going to resign because they'd have to give up a second round pick. So that's not looking super likely. I just I don't know. There's some weird language in that contract. Yeah. Because uh, it was like if he resigns, it's a second. If he doesn't, it's a third. But then also, I think I heard recently, and maybe I'm wrong. If you guys have more information, correct me. Uh, but I think if they wait until after whatever deadline it is, I don't remember what the date is, but if they wait and then re-sign him, it's still a third instead of a second. Mm. And I think that's kind of what's delaying his signing in general because he sounds like he wants to come back to the team. Um, a, a lot of this is speculation and kind of hearsay from tweets, but that's what I've been kind of gathering. Um, so potentially we pump the brakes on, on the Kirk and Evan Ingram thing. But if, if Ridley doesn't re-sign, I think this genuinely is a really good buy window for those guys because they're going to be getting most of the volume. And I think that Gabe Davis can open up the field for them. Um, but for Davis himself, I have him kind of around an early third trade value. What do you think? I think it's fair. Me personally, I'm not looking to acquire Gabe Davis. But if you are looking yeah. for a guy like Gabe Davis who can have those big games, you know, big game Gabe, he's known for that you could go and get him for that price and it would be fair. Yeah. Like that's probably where the market is going to settle, but like middle of the road to below average wide receivers in dynasty. Like there's just so many other options that can give you the same fantasy output. There's almost no reason to try to go acquire that. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, speaking of which, although I do like Darnell Mooney, signs with the Atlanta Falcons for three years, $39 million. Uh, I think this is kind of a similar situation where he opens up the rest of the offense. Uh, I think this is a good signing for London and Pitts because it potentially means that there's less likelihood that the team uh, drafts a wide receiver at that number eight spot in the draft. Um, and if they were to bring in uh, probably a Roma Dunze type um that would, you know, eat into to London and Pitt's fantasy value a little bit. And so I think this is positive. He's a field stretcher. Um, but in terms of Mooney and any of the other kind of details you want to get into, what do you think about this team fit here? Yeah, he's going to be running a lot of sprints out there, a lot of sprints. But like you said, that's going to open up the offense more for London and Pitts, just in terms of him being a field stretcher. That's something that the Atlanta Falcons have been lacking for quite a bit, to be honest. Yeah. So in terms of team fit, it's going to be good. And also, I could see him being somebody that Kirk would lob one up to every once in a while. He's going to get open. So yeah, it's not the worst signing in the world, like you said. I kind of like it. So it's a good fit. Um, yeah, but in terms of value for Mooney, what are you looking at here on this one? 
similar to Gabe Davis, I have like mid to late third. Uh, I guess, what did I say for Gabe? I said early third. They're all kind of in that same boat. Mid mid third is probably like a reasonable price, but again, I'm not necessarily looking to go acquire him. Like you said, depending on how the draft goes, I'd be more excited to draft a, or to trade for a Darnell Mooney than a Gabe Davis at this point, I feel like. Yeah, no, I could see that. I could see that. Um, who else? Kendrick Bourne. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Uh, Noah Brown resigned with the Texans. Depending on what they do with the rest of the wide receiver room, like he made a little bit of noise in fantasy last year, but I don't think we need to go too deep into that one. You agree? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Devin Duvernay to the Jaguars. Going to be a great Again. special teams guy. Yeah. That's very true. I think I think he'll be good for the Jaguars, but probably not for your fantasy teams. Isaiah McKenzie, uh, the Giants, totally irrelevant in my opinion. But one of my favorite moves of this free agency period so far, Deontay Johnson gets traded to the Carolina Panther, Panthers. I absolutely love it. Exactly what this team needs. Somebody who can consistently create separation, which they haven't had for a while. But uh, Well, for a while, really since... DJ Moore, but Bryce Young hasn't had that uh, since he's been in town. So what are your thoughts here? Nah, I think he's going to be great for this team. Uh, he's going to be one of Bryce Young's favorite targets, just like he was one of the favorite targets out there in um, Pittsburgh. I think they're still going to draft another wide receiver out there, so I don't oh, yeah. know if he's going to be a true uh, one, but at the same time, he's going to be a guy who's kind of demand. He's going to demand a lot of volume because he's kind of always demanded a lot of volume. He gets open so often that it's tough to not throw him the ball and keep in mind that like we had they had Adam Thielen last year he was averaging about just shy of 20 points per game if he can do that for the I would, for the first eight weeks for the first the eight weeks yeah yeah but if he can do that imagine what Deontay can go out there and get done to be honest so I'm excited exactly. about this signing I'm excited what they can get done out there and I think him and Bryce Young are gonna have a good time no, I couldn't agree more. Um, and I, I also fully agree with you that the team is going to draft another wide receiver, if not two. Um, but, like, I I think Deontay is going to be more talented than whatever they can get at the beginning of the second round. Maybe, like, an Adonai Mitchell, although he probably gets bumped up into the first. I heard that they're looking at uh, Xavier Leggett. They had a bunch of staff at his pro day uh, yesterday, I believe. Um that wouldn't worry me at all in terms of Deontay Johnson's role or his fantasy value. So I don't mind trading for him now, but you still might be able to get him a little bit cheaper post-draft after they do take somebody. Um, but I'd be more than happy right now to give up like an early to mid-second to bring in Deontay Johnson. Absolutely. I would be ecstatic to make that trade, to be honest with you. Yeah, 100%. All right, and then the last position group, and definitely the least exciting, we can kind of roll through this one. Tight end here. Uh Dalton Schultz re-signs with the Houston Texans. We already talked about that one in the last video. Go check that out. Hunter Henry re-signs with the New England Patriots on a three-year, $27 million deal. Uh, general thoughts here? Just waiting to see who the quarterback is at this point, to be honest. But it's not a bad move. I feel like the Patriots have always kind of historically uh, liked the tight end position, thrown the ball to the tight end position a good bit. So Hunter Henry should be worth something at the very least. I think he's going to be a good tight end. Yeah, good tight end, hopefully quarterback upgrade. I'm thinking late third, early fourth, if you're really desperate, like in the market for a tight end and don't want to just dart throw one in the draft. I'd say that's fair. Yeah. Uh, Noah Fant, re-signs with the Seattle Seahawks, two years, 21 million. I do wish that he had gone to a more exciting destination like a Miami, Cincinnati, LA Rams or something like that. Um, but there is still potential for him in Seattle. Um, Ryan Grubb, their new offensive coordinator, uh, will probably like we'll probably see an increase in pass frequency compared to what they did with Shane Waldron. Um, but there's still a ton of mouths to feed there. Yeah, they still got DK out there. Still got Tyler Lockett. Still got JSN. So in terms of situation, like you said, the new OC there is a difference, but at the same time. He's still in the same group of guys, same mix, so it's not the sexiest destination for him, but it's still a good destination. Hopefully they'll be able to you know, further unlock him. He's been one of those guys who he has been developing over the years, just taking a little bit longer than, uh, I guess, some of the other guys who have started out young, like a Laporta. But Noah Fan is starting to get there. He is picking things up as time goes along. Yeah. Uh, late third? Is that is that too rich, or is that something you'd be willing to part ways with? A late third, if it were tight end premium, for sure. 
uh, yeah. anything else, I'd it'd probably a little bit too rich for my blood. That's fair enough. That makes sense to me. Um, and then a lot of these we can run through real quick, real quickly. Gerald Everett goes to the Chicago Bears for two years, twelve million. Good for the team. Good for probably Caleb Williams, assuming that's who they draft. But I don't think it's great for Everett. No. They have DJ Moore, Komet. Any any kind of additional thoughts there? I think, it, like you said, he's going to be behind Cole Komet. So in terms of volume, it shouldn't be amazing for him. But he's a great fit for the team itself. So a great guy yeah. to have there. And they probably draft another receiver. So even further pushing him down yeah. the, uh, the pecking order. Uh, Colby Parkinson signs with the Rams. Not fantasy relevant. Troutman signs with the Broncos. Same thing. Austin Hooper with the Patriots. Same thing. Uh, Mike Gasicki goes to the Cincinnati Bengals on a one-year deal. Any hope? Any glimmer of hope here? Or I, I, I'm kind of off the Gasicki bandwagon. I used to be on it a lot. But at the same time, he's with a better team. Who knows what's going to happen with T. Higgins. If T. Higgins isn't there somehow before the season starts, it would bump him up for me for sure. But yeah. right as it stands right now, I think he's a guy on a very talented receiving core who's not going to get too much done for himself. Yeah, we like we've seen some of these kind of lower tier tight ends have a little bit of success uh, in Cincinnati. Like Drew Sample had a decent mm-hmm. year last year, um, but it's it's just not that exciting. I, I do think he kind of fits that pass catching mold a little bit better than some of the guys they've signed to one year deals before, but it's still not really moving the needle. Agree. Um, Charlie Warner to the Atlanta Falcons for three years. He's a blocking guy. Uh, one that people might get excited about, but that I am going to urge you to pump the brakes on. Irv Smith Jr. signs with the Kansas City Chiefs on a one-year deal. Thoughts there? He's behind Travis Kelsey. You know? And probably Noah Gray. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, like you said, I, if if you have Irv Smith, I would get rid of him, be honest. Um, I'm not yeah. looking to acquire him. I just It's just not a great player to have on your team he's going to be good for the Chiefs if he ever sees the field but that's a big if yeah yeah take take a late fourth and run if you're offered that but he's not a difference maker um and then the the last signing that's on the list here is John o. Smith goes to the Dolphins but we talked about that in our previous video uh, anything you want to add before we kind of wrap this thing up no nah, it's just it's been a fun free agency period so far um, I think in terms of the big signings, I think we've seen the most of them, to be honest, in terms of just bigger yeah. guys. But at the same time, there is still a lot of excitement to see with the T. Higgins situation. And if more happens exactly. on that, we will talk about that at a future date. So, you know, just kind of as usual, just to get to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys do all that great YouTube stuff. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when we drop all of our latest videos. Hit that like button. It's absolutely free. Best way to get our stuff out there in the YouTube algorithm. And drop a comment down below. What was your favorite free agent signing? Favorite trade? Anything like that? Let us know. Or even least favorite. If you got a least favorite, let us know what's down there. What do you think just didn't really make a big impact? Um, but before we go, Eric, you got anything else for the people? Yeah, if you guys could please check out some of the links that we have down in the description below, especially to our Discord if you're interested in joining that community. We got a great group of guys over there that are talking every single day about new startups, about all these free agency moves, about literally everything. Um, so please do come join that community. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, and also check out the links to our partners over at Do Numbers. I'm wearing one of their hoodies right now. If you're interested in some merch, apparel, t-shirts, hoodies, hats, any of that good stuff, check out our link down there uh, for a discount code. And then also uh, Choice Music Group, if you're interested in some really great music. Uh, as you'll notice in our outros the past couple of videos, we've been ending with some music from Choice Music Group. We will be doing the same on this video here. So check that out. Uh, but as always, if you stuck with us all the way until the end, as always, we love you, and we will catch you in the next video. Peace. Peace. Peace.